If you want to be a doctor, you've a lot to learn. First, you got to have a father with money to burn. Then you got to go to college where you'll take pre-med and find a wealthy co-ed you can woo and wed. And she better be wealthy. Medicine is no career for a poor boy. Well, you work and cheat, study and cram till the word comes down, you passed your exam. So you sit down and write out an application to a college of medical education. And they try to make it look tough. But nowadays, they welcome you with open arms. They're looking for suckers now. The smart boys are studying engineering. The medical school is a seven-day grind, stuffing unlearned facts in a weary mind. You measure muscles, you note down doses, name the dread disease and the diagnosis. And then two days later, some researcher comes around with a new cure. Four days later, he succumbs to the cure. Your high school mates are out coining dough while every morning to class you must go. You tell yourself, man, I'm a three-toed sap. I've hooked myself in an MD trap. Why? 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 Because your mother wanted a doctor around she could trust. Still, you've come so far on the perilous trip, you'll sign aboard that internship. And then you discover the rest was pie compared to the labor that you've just come by. Man, this is crazy. You know, compared to interning, being a terminal patient is a promotion. When the torture is over, you sent the prize. The time has come when you must specialize. You gotta touch the surface in dermatology or start from the bottom in proctology. You know you can study hormones? Sure, you get your supplies from the HOLC. That's the Hormoners Loan Corporation. Well, the years go by and the fires get cold. By the time you make it, you are too darned old. Still, the framed diplomas look mighty nice when your friends drop by for free advice. Give it to them. After all, it doesn't cost you anything. Ah, yeah. Well, tonight's show is going to be a little bit different. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, going to feature an entire work by a recording artist uh, from the folk genre by the name of Oscar Brand, B-R-A-N-D, O-S-C-A-R. Oscar Brand is, not was, but is a Canadian-born folk singer who grew up and came of age in the United States of America. Oscar Brand was, and still working at his craft to this day, Oscar Brand was born February 7, 1920. He will soon be 95 years old. Among other things, he hosts a weekly uh, radio show uh, called Folk Festival on an AM radio station in New York City, of all places, that just celebrated its 68th year on the air. Now, Oscar Brand has recorded over 100 albums in his recording career, which goes all the way back to the 1940s. This particular uh, album called For Doctors Only, an irreverent musical spoof prescribed for doctors and patients and guaranteed to keep them both in stitches, was released in 1960. Uh, 54 years ago, soon to be 55 years ago. And what's interesting about this is medical practice, medical insurance, all things medical are being addressed as if they are a problem that has just newly arisen on the horizon and by golly must be dealt with. The songs satirizing and spoofing all things medical on this album were written and recorded 55 years ago. Uh, the first cut you heard was How to Be a Doctor. And uh, interspersed, there'll be a little bit of me, but not much because I'm not, uh, this is about Oscar. Uh, I'm gonna play you right now, cut number two. Appendectomy, country style, 1960, Oscar brand. <laughs> Wash your hands and get them dry, keep them clean and keep them high. When you're sure that you are able, promenade up to the table and get that appendix, lay it bare. We're doing the McBurney Square.
Now drape that patient neat and tight. Bear the quadrant on the lower right. Do see do and careful all while you make a decision in that wall. It's a right hand under if you dare do in the McBurney Squad. Swing that knife blade with a toss Along the muscles, not across With your fingers then induce The peritoneum to work loose You mustn't rip and you mustn't tear Or do in the McBurney Square! When the cavity's been breached The cecum and appendix reached Put a purse string suture on the base And sprinkle gauze pads round the place Not for the oyster, I declare Do in that McBurney Square! Cup inside, crush ligate and then divide. Swing your partner, I'll swing mine. Paint the stump with iodine. Force it back again with care. Doing that McBurney square. <laughs> Tie the purse string very tight, suture the peritoneum right. Let those muscles settle in, then count the pads and close the skin. Salute the patient, collect your fee. You've done the appendectomy! from Oscar Brand's 1960 masterpiece for doctors only is simply titled the OBGYN 55 years ago. A doctor lives in our town, a paragon of men. His specialty is known to some as OBGYN. His sense of touch is wonderful, he feels where he can't see. He started from the bottom, and that's where he'll always be. I can't understand it, he is open and candid, but so underhanded, the OBGYN. Well, you walk into his office and suddenly feel fear. You know where you would rather be, anywhere but here. You try to keep him talking, but your efforts he ignores. Then you see two legs high in the air, and you realize they're yours. Oh, I can't understand it. He is open and candid, but so underhanded. The OBGYN. You'd think he'd get enough of it, that the thrill would soon be gone. But he works for the love of it, he fingers on and on. He pries with gay abandon, where secret sorrows lurk. He tries to keep his hand in, cause he likes the inside work. Oh, I can't understand it, he is open and candid. But so underhanded, the OBGYN. At night he turns his light off and homeward makes his way. His wife is there to greet him, to tell him of her day. She says, I feel romantic, I'd like one night of love. In absent-minded reflex, he pulls on his rubber glove. I can't understand it, he is open and candid, but so underhanded, the OBGYN. Some folks might think the record that I'm playing is saying some things folks aren't not to be saying. But consider this little fact. It was recorded over 50 years back. 50 years back. 50 years back Some folks think he's Saying things he ought not be saying But consider this fact It was recorded 
50 years back Cut number four Charming White Caps I'm a woman whose life is a trial and a curse I'm training to be a professional nurse I study and slave to acquire the knack But all that I've got is a pain in my back I remember that first day my heart seemed to melt I thought I knew how Florence Nightingale felt My room seemed as large as a girl's room should be Then I learned that I shared it with 50 like me And every dawn we set out for the wards We wake up the weary belligerent hordes Pulses are noted and temperatures checked We sometimes get 10 out of 20 correct We change and we prop and we tuck and we clean We crank up the bed and we fold up the screen And when we bend over we do it with fear If interns and doctors are anywhere near From morning to evening we stay on the run Whatever we do there is more to be done We rub and we scrub and we empty the pan the muscles I've got would look great on a man So girls heed my warning before I collapse Don't fall for the lure of the charming white caps Try cleaning, shoplifting, street walking or worse Believe me it's better than being a nurse I wonder why it is folk music never goes away. Songs they were singing a hundred years ago, they sing today, yeah. And I wonder why it is that folk music never goes away. Why is it that folk music never goes away? Why does it continually play? Cut number five, television doctor. You've heard the daily broadcast of the doctor in the West. Two pistols and a stethoscope inside his leather vest. He shoots them down, he heals them up, and he sings a short refrain. The title of the show is MD Saddles on the Plane. The ad reads, for years the pox and plague this man endured. And then he went to Dr. X and all his ills were cured. The ads say that the doctor's pills are all that you could ask. They don't reveal he's one foot high and wears a voodoo mask. The television doctor smiles and recommends a pill. Then he feeds it to an actor who is skilled at looking ill. In 30 seconds he's all cured, he runs, he smiles, he jumps. The minute that they're off the air, they call for stomach pumps. Young Dr. Kilcare gets a call, he hurries to the scene. He does his best despite those ten commercials in between. The patients die, but still he smiles, a glow is in his cheeks. He's heard the sponsor just renewed for 52 more weeks. So here's to our mass media and the image they promote Of lovely nurses and a man on whom the patients dote Wouldn't it be grand if every patient paid the fee And we knew what we were doing like those doctors on TV
we all want our lives to mean something we all want to be unique miracle drug side one cut six Miracle drugs, miracle drugs, they're driving us out of our minds. My mail is full of booklets, a thousand every day. Each tells of some new triumph and says the proof is on the way. They send me tons of samples with miles of purple prose. So I feed them to my mailman, cause he needs them, heaven knows. Miracle drugs, miracle drugs, they're driving us out of our minds. The detail men pursue me, this calmative supreme. This anti-hypertensive will make your life a living dream. They say, try this anorexic or use diuretic pills. They may not cure your patient's doc, but they'll make for healthy bills. Miracle drugs, miracle drugs, they're driving us out of our minds. The red ones make you peppy, the white ones slow you down. The green ones make you happy, the blue ones make you frown. The pink ones are the favorites, that's why their price is high. They don't do anything at all, but they taste like blended rye. Miracle drugs, miracle drugs, they're driving us out of our minds. You have to read the labels, the microscopic text which warns in words too small to read of evil side effects. There's nausea, dehydration, depression, and headache, and lots of symptoms worse by far than what caused you to take those miracle drugs, miracle drugs, they're driving us out of our minds. Call me away, take me away, but never tell me I was wrong. I ain't giving you the satisfaction of admitting I was wrong. Cut seven, side one, Oscar Brand, 1960. My first day at medical school, S-C-H-O-O-L. On my first day at med school, the professor said to me, don't ever lower your fee. On the second day at med school, the professor said to me, don't work for free and don't ever lower your fee. On the third day at med school, the professor said to me, don't write too clear, don't work for free and don't ever lower your fee. On my fourth day at med school, the professor said to me, don't work too fast. Don't write too clear, don't ever do a job for free, and don't ever lower your fee. On the fifth day at med school, the professor said to me, if you frown like there's trouble, your fee will double, and don't work too fast. Don't write too clear, don't ever do a job for free, and don't ever lower your fee. On the sixth day of med school, the professor said to me, Hands off the nurse, cause I saw her first. If you frown like there's trouble, your fees will double. And don't work too fast. Don't write too clear, don't ever do a job for free. And don't ever lower your fee. On my last day at med school, the professor said to me, Lend me five bucks. Don't write too clear, don't ever do a job for free, and don't ever lower your fee.
Hey ha, hey ha. Now, before we get into side two of our tribute to the long playing record album from 1960 for Doctors Only by folk satirist Oscar Brand, who is now 94, pushing 95 years old. We should recap a little bit because attention spans being what they are these days, I doubt very many people who saw the first half of this uh, are still with us. <laughs> Oscar Brown, Oscar Brown, Oscar Brand, born February 7th, 1920, recorded over 100 record albums, a.k.a. records in his career. Still going strong in 94. Next February will be 95. Still has a weekly radio show that he's hosted for 68 years in uh, New York City on an AM radio station called uh, uh, Folk Music Festival. Anyway, uh, this album was recorded in 1960, 54 years ago, and it satirizes the medical community from top to bottom. And medical... Uh, News is the latest news, and we all act like it's never been a problem before until now. It was so good in the old days. Why'd they have to mess with it? It was so good. It was perfect. Well, each and every one of these songs is a satirical dig at the medical profession, a.k.a. 1960. Side two, we'll start with a song called The Good Old GP. Yeah. Hey, I'm blocking my own shot. He strapped up Grandpa's shoulder, gave Ma some pills to hold her. He fed the baby castor oil for free. And as he passed the barn, of course, he gave a hypo to the horse. Yeah, the man they call the old GP. With his puffing little full ever, he would ford the raging river in answering some dire emergency. And sometimes as he drew near that shack, he'd hear him shout, we're cured, go back. A man they call the old GP. In snow or stormy weather, he would ride hell-bent for leather. His patients watched him sneeze and cough with glee. <laughs> As he gulped some pills from off his shelf, they laughed, Physician, heal thyself, the man they called the old GP. He was loved and much respected, but his bills went uncollected. Cause when folks were ill, he couldn't ask a fee. And when they had that healthy feeling, they would say it's nature's healing, not the man they call the old GP. He was honored and admired and the young folks he inspired as honest as a human being can be so warm-hearted so impassioned bless his soul so darned old-fashioned the man they call the old gp it is very funny how opinions switch sides depending on who has a microphone. Liberal today, it's conservative tomorrow. Conservative today is liberal tomorrow. It never stays where you put it. I wonder, should it? Ain't it funny how things drift around? What used to be up will eventually be down. And what used to be down 
will finally come around and be up until it's down again. Ain't it kind of funny how things drift around? What used to be up will eventually be down. And what used to be down will have us turn it being up till people get fed up with up being up. Side two, cut two. Here comes the A period, M period, A period. Here comes the AMA. 40, no, 54 years ago. Run, doctors, run, or else they're gonna get you. Run, doctors, run, here comes the AMA. Ah, here's to the boys who print our journal, where truth and service spring eternal. They praise the good guy, damn the bad, unless he takes a full page ad. Run, doctors, run, or else they're gonna get you. Run, doctors, run, here comes the AMA. They do their work without complaint, and in return brook no restraint. They work like dogs each waking hour to keep their little selves in power. Run, doctors, run, or else they're gonna get you. Run, doctors, run, here comes the AMA. They send their men to Washington to make sure that their will be done. Their lobby rolls on unencumbered, cause they got the government outnumbered. Run, doctors, run, or else they're gonna get you. Run, doctors, run, here comes the AMA. Their lobbyists try hard to jettison all state attempts to pay for medicine. They call it pink, they haw, they hem, unless, of course, the dough's for them. Run, doctors, run, or else they're gonna get you. Run, doctors, run, here comes the AMA. So here's to the men of our ruling block who stand together like a rock. They never flinch at evil news. When trouble comes, they just raise our dues. Run, doctors, run, or else they're gonna get you. Run, doctors, run, here comes the AMA. Run, doctors, run, or else they're gonna get you. Run, doctors, run, here comes the AMA. One of the neat things about messing with old records, like this one recorded in 1960. Is that they drive home the point of how little things change. The more things change, the more they stay the same. This record album, satirizing the medical profession, was recorded 54 years, or at least released 54 years ago. Might have been recorded a few years before that, who knows? Gonna play for you now. Side two, cut three. A, a little thing called conventional wisdom. Conventional behavior. Here's to that trip that we take every year. Here's to that lovely convention. 
When like the birds heading south for the spring, we flee from our troubles and tension. The notices read, Doc, get thee hence, shut down the office and hang the expense. Perhaps you would rather vacation elsewhere at some spa that revives and relaxes. But at this convention, your food, fun, and fare can all be deducted from taxes. Whatever you spend dolls up your return. Save bills and receipts, you'll have money to burn. Register quickly that very first day at the hotel where everyone's stopping. Next thing the wife says, thank goodness that's done. Now let's go outside and start shopping. Here come the doctors, the storekeepers yell. Let's drag out the junk that we never can sell. A pleasant and uninterrupted night's sleep And here's one fact that's worthy of mention The children of doctors nine times out of ten Are born nine months after convention One moment of silence in praise of that blurb The print on the card that says do not disturb You swear you don't care how it's going back home Although all the listeners may doubt you But you call up your nurse and you're sorry to hear They're all very happy without you As the last day draws near, we all shed a tear Why can't we attend a convention all year? You are listening to a record album recorded in 1960 by Oscar Brand, duh, 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 who's 94 years old and still going strong. The entire album satirizes the medical profession in a folk style. Uh, cut number four. Cut number four from side two is titled Surgery. <laughs> Say, why not be an operator? Cut it now, sew it later. Surgery is where the heavy dough is. If a patient's got toe mane, you can free him from the pain soon as you discover where the toe is. Surgery, surgery. First you slice and then you stitch. Cut it out and you'll be rich. Surgery, surgery. There's no peril, keep it sterile. Surgery. Why waste time in diagnosis? Life can be a bed of roses and you never have to work your rear off. Your stream of life will soon be rippleless if he comes with erysipelas. All you gotta do is take his ear off. Surgery, a surgery. First you slice and then you stitch. Cut it out and you'll be rich. Surgery, surgery. There's no peril, keep it sterile. Surgery. Wise guy patients never tease you when they're under anesthesia. Surgery cuts down their jeering laughter. So keep your mayo stand in order. Slash away, give no quarter. Suit yourself, suture them thereafter. Surgery, surgery. First you slice and then you stitch. Cut it out and you'll be rich. Surgery, surgery. There's no peril, keep it sterile. Surgery. If a scratch has suppurated, surgery is indicated. What he hasn't got can't give him trouble. So get his family to sign, then cut along the dotted line. Even if you're wrong, they pay you double. It's surgery, surgery. First you slice and then you stitch. You cut it out and you'll be rich. It's surgery, surgery. There's no peril, keep it sterile. Surgery. Be it wart, chemoid, or cancer, surgery should be your answer, even if it's just a wee biopsy. 
Let this practice rule your life And though they'll call you Mac the Knife Your bank account will grow and grow like Topsy with surgery Surgery First you slice and then you stitch Cut it out and you'll be rich It's surgery Surgery There's no peril Keep it sterile Surgery Fifty years ago, it was a long enough time ago, for those of us today to forget, have forgotten most of what went on. When I found this record at a thrift store for 29 cents, I wasn't all that surprised to find it in really good condition because it's a comedy record. And most comedy records only get listened to a few times and then put away or given away or thrown away because how many times can you listen to the same joke I had never heard well I guess I have my the name Oscar brand rang a bell but there was no clear image associated with that name in my mind But when, as I listen to this record, I'm really happy and glad that it survived, especially in nice shape. Sounds a lot more like the guy is talking to you now. Nothing changes in big ways. There's some things in this world that are much better than they were 50 years ago. But not as many things have changed as we would like to believe. And that's a good thing to know as into the future we go. Cut five, side two. Doctor's wife. Circa 1960. Five o'clock in the early morn, the phone begins to ring. In normal homes, it's a false alarm. It doesn't mean a thing. But when I reach out to take his hand, there's no one there but me. So if ever I marry again, I swear a carpenter's wife I'll be. Oh, a carpenter's wife leads an easy life, contented with her lot. He's at the table at six o'clock and the dinner is piping hot. But if mine came home before 2 a.m., he'd be gone by 2.03. So if ever I marry again, I swear a storekeeper's wife I'll be. A storekeeper's kids have a happy time and daddy is lots of fun. He's always got time for the wife and kids when the daily work is done. But one day when my love came home, the kids all said, who's he? If ever I marry again, I swear a fisherman's wife I'll be. For a fisherman's wife has a happy life, he hurries home with a catch. But mine comes home with a billion germs just getting ready to hatch. Whatever he's found on the daily round, he brings it home for free. So if ever I marry again, I swear an architect's wife I'll be. They also serve who stand and wait, that goes for the doctor's wives. 
They say he's doing a useful job, he's saving a thousand lives. So thank the Lord, he's my adored, I'll keep him company. And whatever goes wrong, I'll string along, and a doctor's wife I'll be. Fifty years ago, I was anticipating my upcoming 14th birthday. My mom was 36 years old. My dad was still alive. So was my bopke, my grandma. My younger brother was still with us. My older brother, we all was living at home still. Gathering around the black and white TV set every night. Paul was a working man. Ma was a stay-at-home mom. We ate dinner every night at the kitchen table. All of us. Most of us would then watch TV later in the evening. The same program. I don't ever remember being deprived of not having my own source of entertainment it just doesn't I don't remember it that way oops I remember it being kind of cool I like kind of like those memories and I, I I don't have any memories of the world being as screwed up as all adults tend to view it as being at least I didn't think it was cut six from side two Medical Life Calypso. Medical Life Calypso. 1960. Hey. You're up in the morning and you wash up your faces. A stop at the hospital and visit your cases. Forms for insurance got to fill in the spaces and Oh yes, that is the medical life Listen to detail men, answer your letters There's two thousand charities, two thousand debtors Requests for free lectures from local go-getters and Oh yes, that is the medical life Have to fill out consultation report X-rays and cardiograms you have to sort But accident cases will keep you in court And uh, oh yes, that is the medical life So you ring up your home, your wife starts to bawl You say you'll be late because you're making a call She knows she's in luck, she ever see you at all Because oh yes, that is the medical life Four hours to sleep Ten minutes to dine, new cures to study, admissions to sign. You're seeking a practice? I'll give you mine. Uh, oh yes, that is the medical life. Well, we got one song left in our No Star tribute to Oscar Brand's album for Doctors Only. Side two, cut seven, am I right there? Yes, it's called Quest for Disease. Quest for Disease. Quest for Disease, yeah. Quest for Disease. <laughs> Full 20,000 years ago when man was young and skulls were low Cro-Magnons drew a portrait of a doctor in a cave The Incas and the Aztecs too of drugs and splints and fractures knew So the art of healing grew to cheat the early grave In ancient Greece, the lowest clod knew Esculapius, the god, who bore a snake-entwined rod and sickness linked with sin. 
But in his vanguard there was one, Hippocrates, the doctor's son, who studied, probed, and thus was begun the science of medicine. In spite of superstitious fools, he forged our analytic tools, he promulgated noble rules, the modern doctor's creed. When Rome did all the world bestride, the inspiration he supplied for Galen's anatomic guide, a mighty work indeed. The Arab Avicenna next turned inspiration into text, and though the world was still perplexed, he seemed to have a key. When Roger Bacon said that each must for himself the answers reach, then did Vesalius find and teach a true anatomy. As from a famine to a feast, the giants of medicine increased, and William Harvey, not the least, described the flow of blood. The great clinician hunter showed the treatment could become a code, and from his careful studies flowed great knowledge as a flood. The name of Jenner merits praise for proving in those early days inoculations potent ways to end the pox with ease. Nor was the fame of Pasteur small, he proved at last to one and all, with chemistry his crystal ball, that germs would cause disease. And so the list goes on and on, with Lister, Koch, Virchow and Schwann, their names are now inscribed upon the honor roll of time. Mueller, Schleiden, Ehrlich, Best, Banting, Renchen, and the rest all guide us in eternal quest, a never-ending climb. A thousand others we could name whose aspirations were the same. From offices and labs they came from universities. And so with grateful heart we toast this splendid dedicated host who speed the day when man can boast the conquest of disease. And there you have it, our No Star tribute to the 1960 record album for Doctors Only by one Oscar Brand. Satirical songs lampooning all things medical from 54 years, soon to be 55 years ago. Hope you found it interesting, because the truth is, I would have done it whether you did or not. <laughs> and now, what little remaining time we have left, I'd like to uh, use a little something I call filler. Did you notice? 
was it slick or awkward, I wonder.
the whole country. And I want to talk about gas or how long it will last. I don't want to talk about the future. I don't want to live in the past. I need to know. Oh, we ain't got a barrel of my honey. Maybe we're ragged and funny, but we'll travel along singing our song, yeah, side by side. Don't know what's coming tomorrow. Maybe it's trouble and sorrow, but we'll travel the road, sharing our load, yeah, side by side. Through all kinds of weather, what if the sky should fall? Just as long as we're together, it really doesn't matter at all. <clears throat> when they all had their quarrels and parted, yeah, we'll be the same as we started, just singing that song, traveling along, yes, yeah, side by side. Oh, do da di 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 da bottom. Yum ba boo dee ba doom ba da ba boo dee ba doom bow. Have a doom down, be dee ba doom bow. Be doom bow. Ha dum ba dee ba dum ba dum ba dum. Ha la do da do da do doom wa dum ba boo da ba doom now. Boo da ba doom now. Yeah, doom dee dee doom down down. Alam bam ba 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 wa ba 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 Oh, we ain't got a barrel of money. Maybe we're bragging and funny, but we'll travel along and yeah, singing our song side by side. Ooh, yes, yeah, side, 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 side by side, yeah.